Hi folks and welcome to the Rocky Mountain Crafter. This package of paper 6x6 six six Harvest Festival by Catherine Pooler was my inspiration for the colors that I chose for my cards today. However, it does have a very fall themed color palette to it. So I did add in some blue as well, which made it just such elegant cards paired with these stamp sets that came in a Club Circe. So this was a deluxe Club Circe where you got all four sets, two stamps and two dies. And on the bottom of this paper pack, it tells you what colors are in here. So it makes for easy coordination when you pull those stamp pads. And here is the beautiful sentiment, encouraging words stamp set. And it just has such lovely sayings in it. And it just goes so good. All these products just go so good together. I'm very intimidated by two-step, three-step layered stamping. But I find that this precision press by We Are Memory Keepers makes it so easy because it comes with different plates. So you can just load up the plates as I've done here with your stamp set. So this is the background flower set. So it's the bulk of the flowers. And then there's a layering detailed image that goes on top. So with these plates and being able to pick up the stamp set with them, it just makes it so easy. And I just, I'm no longer intimidated by layering stamp sets because of this precision press. So here I've laid down the background. I've used buttercream ink by Catherine Pooler. And here I'm just picking up the detailed image part with a different plate. I have three different plates, but if you only had one plate, you could use one side for the detailed and the other side of the plate for the bulk of the image. So here I'm picking up the apricot ink and just inking up the detailed image in apricot. Like I said, I just love how easy this is and I, I can do this over and over. Now that I have them placed, I can just do it over and over again. And I actually do that in many different colors. You'll see later. Here I'm picking up the leaves and uh, just using some eucalyptus ink on those leaves. And again, just laying it down. And then I go in with cargo for de the details. And I just put them on the same plate, but at the bottom or the top. So I can just flip them back and forth and do it that way. There I've just flipped my paper around because there's more room on that piece of paper. And so here I'm just doing it again on the top of that piece of paper with the same colors. And then I have many, many images that I could do over and over again. I forgot to do the little detailed insides of the flowers, so I stamped those up in Merlot ink. And here's some I've done in more of a brown color. Just the variation that you can get in color from doing it this way and how quick and easy it is once you have your stamps all laid down on that precision press. It's just so easy. And here I'm putting it all into my switch, my big shot switch, which I absolutely love. And I'm just die cutting those and taking those images out. And I end up with a beautiful selection of various colored flowers and leaves. And I have so much to play with and so much to choose from. So here is a two step, actually it's a three step image because the die cut for this is all one piece. And so here I've just rotated my paper. That's all I've done. I keep my images on the same plates and just rotate the paper. And there's all the die cuts that I have afterwards. Now I'm gonna go die cut this die here, vine and frame dies. And I'm gonna cut a couple of them in white and maybe an off-white. And I might even, I'm not sure yet, but maybe I wanna glitter one of them up with some WoW embossing powder. So I will be right back after I do that. So I put those through my Big Shot switch as well. And here on this one piece, I'm just cutting it to be a square. It was a scrap piece of paper I had, so I have more of a frame now on it. I'm also gonna try this setup here where we have the frame inside of, so this one here, because I cut them separately before, I got the two different pieces, but now I'm gonna do it as one and see what we end up with. Oh, 
big mess I've got going on. Okay, but messes are what makes crafting fun. All right, so here, yeah, I thought that my die moved because I didn't have it taped down and I lost some of the leaves, but that's okay. We could tuck those under other leaves so we could still use that piece, but let's see what we get out of this one. I think we get a scalloped edge and a square. Oh no, look at that. Now we have, cool, that's neat. So you could do it like this, that is really cool. And this one here, I cut the edges off to be square because I just did it on a piece of paper without. And this one here, you get the scalloped edge, that is cool. And you could even do shakers like that. That is neat, oh, that would make a beautiful shaker. Look at that, sweet deal. And you could do a shaker with this as well. You could just do a square background. Oh, this is cool. Okay, let's make some cards. I start with some wow embossing powder and this shade is called silver snow, but it's really more of a beige than a silver. I guess it has some sparkle to it. So maybe that's why it's called silver. So I just take some Versamark ink and I'm inking up that frame with the foliage on it and laying down that beautiful embossing powder. And then I start heating it up from the back. That way anything that flies off is going to get hot before it has a chance to fly off and it's just less messy. Then I have this beautiful sparkly frame with the foliage attached to it. Color play, blank card bases. So we're just gonna use one of those and start building our card. I just take my bone folder here and give that pre-made card base a good crease and take that frame. Now I decided that I wanted to do a shaker. So here I have a piece of acetate that I put the die through again because it won't cut it out. Acetate doesn't cut out with dyes very easily, but it does put that imprint in there. So then I take my scissors and I fussy cut on the inside of it. That way when we glue, it's not gonna hang over the edge. And here I'm using liquid glue so that I have a chance to move it around afterwards. It doesn't dry immediately. And I take some acrylic blocks and I put those on just for pressure to, you know, keep it all straight. And I put the piece that I'm going to be putting my sentiment on into my precision press. That way I can get perfect placement and double ink, ink it twice if I need to, if it doesn't work out the first time. I find stamping to be so enjoyable with the precision press. It is absolutely perfect. Beautiful. Okay, so that was quick and easy. And guess what I'm making? That's right, making a shaker. So I love this tape for shakers, you guys. It's amazing. So this stuff here, it bends. I'll do a corner first to show you. So if you take the peel off all the way completely, off both sides first, because it's so thin, it is made to bend. It doesn't stay straight, so here. And it's just the perfect size for a shaker. And you can go around corners with it. It is amazing. I love it. Hopefully it sticks to this acetate sheet here that I have, which isn't really acetate. It's packaging. And I will link all of these products below. So on YouTube, if that's where you're watching, it will be right below the video. Just click on a link and it will take you right to where you need to go shopping. Here I'm just using some sequins to put into the inside of what's going to be the shaker. And I put this piece back into the precision press and I put the backing on top of it and... Let's see what we got. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh yeah. <laughs> Hope this brightens your day. Look at that, it's so cute, you guys. Oh my word. Okay, I love shaker cards. Okay, so we'll go put this onto a hard base and put some flowers on top and call it done. So I've pulled that piece of coordinating paper from that paper pa package and I'm using that as a background on the card base. And I'm just laying out some flowers and foliage and I put it all down and that is that first card done. It has that little bit of glitter on that frame and it pops with the shaker and oh, I just love how this turned out. 
So for the second card, it's a little bit different. I am using the negative piece of one of the die cuts. So the scalloped edge die cut. And then I'm going in here with some blues. This first one is Fiesta blue. And I just sort of ink blend in a diagonal across that rectangular shape there. Then I go in with another blue, which is suede shoes, and it's a darker color. And I just like the depth that these two blues give it. And then with a water reactive pen, well, the, the pen is filled with water. It's a paintbrush, essentially, water brush. I just sprinkle some water droplets on there because the ink is water reactive. Then I take that frame off and I see what we have. And it's this beautiful, background. It kind of looks like snow or a starry night. It's just gorgeous. So here I've got a little bit of the ink on the white edge, which will essentially end up on the card and I want to get that off. So I am using a sand block by Couture Creations. You can see the blue that I got there. I just very lightly in that one spot sand it off and it comes out crisp and clean and white and you can't even tell at all that there was anything there. Again, I will link all the products below. There's the beautiful background, the depth of color of those two blues. Oh, I just love it. Then I start layering the foliage and the flowers on this card and trying to figure out what looks good along with a sentiment that's appropriate. I love the blue with these oranges. It just makes it so nice. So again, I put that sentiment into the precision press and I am going to be heat embossing the sentiment so you want to make sure that you do use your powder tool whatever kind of powder tool you might have to uh, prepare your your background with for the embossing powder and there I'm just using some bright white the sentiment is so sorry things are tough and I just heat emboss that and look at that, it looks so pretty, I love it. So here I've decided I'm going to do some foliage in blue as well. So again, picking up those two shades of blue, the Fiesta blue and the suede shoes to do the background and the detailed layers. And then I have, uh, I turn it in my precision press so I can use up most of that piece of paper. And then I die cut all of those out and I have lots of blues that I can work with now when in my foliage. Oh, I just love this. I love the blue and the orange together. So I wanted the background to be that same blue color. So I just took the ink that was left on the blending brush and that's it. Then I just put some liquid glue onto the back of that piece of paper so that once I've glued it down, I can still have a few seconds to move it around if need be, if it's not completely centered. That's why I use liquid glue. And there it is. That is the second card done. You guys, these are coming along so nicely. Look at that. So sorry things are tough. Oh, that's just so beautiful. So for the third card, I take that rectangle. I, I've been calling it a square, but you know, you know it's a rectangle. And you remember that foliage leaf there that I cut the edge off accidentally? Well, I'm able to tuck that under this border and you can't even tell. So I just put some liquid glue on there and tuck that under. And then I start building this up with the same flowers and leaves and foliage. And I do add some blue in here because I really love that blue with these colors. I just think it pops so nicely. So I just use liquid glue for all of that. I think I did pop up the flower with so it does have dimension it has some some foam adhesive on the back of it now i found that this is looking a little white to me it's like so white anyways i do my sentiment in eucalyptus which is a beautiful green color so that definitely gives it some interest and i just do that by hand i didn't bother putting that in my precision press i thought if it didn't work out i could just flip the paper over <laughs> and do it again Anyways, that worked out perfect the first time, but when I put this onto a card base, well, here I'm putting liquid glue on the back again so that I have seconds to move it around after if need be, but then when I put it onto a card base, you guys, I don't love this. I actually don't love it at all. So I go ahead and I start making my own background paper. I just, in the moment, thought, well, that's what I'll do, and so that's what I did. So I'm just taking that leaf motif design 
And with the detailed image piece, I'm just going around it again in a darker green. So those are eucalyptus and cargo that I'm using for this, just so that it ties into the colors of the foliage that I've used on the, the rectangular piece. Then I go in with those two blues and that little piece of whatever that is, little accent piece of foliage. And yeah, I just go around with those two blues until I'm happy. Now, I took some of the buttercream uh, with a blending brush and I just blended that all the way around this edge because it's only the edge that's gonna show through. If you remember, I already have that rectangular piece with the sentiment on it. So it's just the edge that's gonna show through. And this to me, oh, I love this so much. Now I'm popping it up with some dimensional tape and just taking the backing off of those and sticking it on there Oh, and I just, honestly, I cannot believe how beautiful this card turned out in the end. I hated the white, but I love it with this homemade background. So here I'm taking one of those color play card bases again, and I'm just scoring it with my bone folder, and I just adhere the whole, whole thing down with liquid glue so that I have seconds to play with it, to center it all perfectly. And that, you guys, is the third card done. And so zip zap, all three of these cards came together so quickly. I have so many leaves and foliage left over. Oh yes, then I did decide to glitter this up, sequin it up, I suppose. And so the sequin mix that I used here is Zermatt sequin mix by Catherine Pooler and just using some liquid glue to put those down. So yeah, this is all three cards. Just beautiful. A shaker and a sympathy card and all my love. There's so much versatility in what you could do with these stamps and dies, just two stamp sets and two dies, like amazing. Anyways, you guys, I am the Rocky Mountain Crafter. I thank you so much for watching today. You can find me on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and at the Rocky Mountain Crafter.com. Take care, you guys, and have a wonderful week. Bye-bye. Thank you.